month before you go, you need to make sure that you've bought your park tickets. Because if you're staying on Disney property two months before, 60 days before, you can access the FastPass system. If you're not staying on Disney property, it's 30 days before. Now, everyone that has a Disney park ticket can choose three fast passes in advance. Once they've used all three on the day, they can start selecting more of them. But you want to get in as early as possible and start signing up for fast passes. Now, those popular rides that I've spoken about, they will be chosen very, very quickly. If you don't have a fast pass, you're going to have to join the queue. And sometimes the queue at busy times can be two hours long for some of the really popular rides. Get into the fast pass system as soon as you possibly can with that list of rides and basically make sure you lock down fast pass for those rides. So having done all that before you head to Walt Disney World, how do you make the most of your day actually in each park? First of all, make sure you have the app on your phone, make sure you have your smartphone with you, but make sure that you get to the parks early. So before what's known as rope drop, you need to be there way before 9 a.m. in the morning. As you head into the park, make sure you grab the map and also there's a leaflet which will have that particular day's times so for things like the parade, shows, anything that's closed or changes. So you know exactly what's happening that day, so you might have to adjust your plans. When the rope drop happens, then make your way as fast as possible to the number one ride on your list because you'll be there right at the very beginning. You should get on that ride at least once, make a beeline for the second ride and the third ride. So hopefully by 10 o'clock or half past 10, you've done the three big rides that you want to do. And then you can basically head back, look at your fast passes, either do rides again or change your plans. The other thing to do is, of course, keep looking at the app, keep an eye on wait times and find what's busy and not busy and keep adapting what you do as you look at the other rides. Bear in mind that most people will eat lunch around 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock they'll be very busy. A lot of people, if it's a Magic Kingdom or watch the parade at 3 o'clock, so those are good times to think about you know, doing rides. What I also recommend you do in terms of dining is a lot of people like to book the sit-down restaurants for the whole experience. I actually recommend you don't do that and go for the easy dining option, partly because it's quicker, but also the great thing about that is on the app, you can order the food in advance. So you can decide what food you want, and when you're either at the restaurant or you're ready to eat, you basically, there's a little button you push on the app, which says, like, I'm ready for my food right now. They then prepare it and bring it out so you can wait you know, minutes before the food comes out. It means you don't have to line up with everybody to place your order. It's just much more efficient. Another great tip for making the most of your day is any ride that has a solo rider or a single rider option, take that option. If you don't mind, you know, you're quite happy to not to necessarily go on rides with your friends or partner or whoever you're traveling with. Because those lines are often quite short because a lot of people, of course, like to go on rides with who they're traveling with. So my next tip is around what should you take into the park. It's Florida, so it's hot and humid so make sure you've got a hat, sunscreen, sunglasses. Florida is also prone to you know bursts of rain which you can often just chuck down, clear up. So take one of those plastic ponchos with you. It's really handy, it's better than an umbrella and also for some of those rides where they are either outside or you know you like to get wet it's a, it's a real boon to have you know one of those plastic ponchos. Take a water bottle with you and you can keep filling it up and stay hydrated. Of course, make sure that you've either, if you're staying at Disney property, you've got your magic band on, or you've got cash and credit cards to you know, buy things for lunch or buy merchandise. Because you're going to be relying on your smartphone so much to manage the day, make sure that you've either got an extra charger for your smartphone, or also make sure that you've brought along a charger. So if you do have to plug it in anywhere, you can plug it in. There's lots of places you can charge phones, or if you're struggling, go to guest services, and they can normally help you charge phones. The next step I have is decide whether you're going to stay on an, a Disney property or not. So what are the benefits of staying on a Disney property? Well, one of them is that you get access to the fast pass way in advance. You get transfers from the airport, you get extended park hours, you get free transport to and from the park. Also, if you buy anything in the park, that can be shipped direct to your hotel. So downsides are, if you're traveling as an adult, it can be a more expensive option because, of course, the rooms are designed to really host families. And also, of course, you're more likely to have lots of kids. So if you're actually looking for an adult break, why not consider actually staying off property? So, for example, on International Drive, look for hotels which are perhaps more business-focused or conference-focused. You can often get rooms much cheaper. But a lot of the hotels, even those conference hotels, will include free transport to all of the parks. So I would, as an adult visiting Disney, unless you want to go for the whole Disney experience, consider staying off property. Now my last tip is how do you get help on the go? So the, the actual app has lots of help in. There is a manned Twitter account which is 
VW Today, which is there to help support everybody in the park service. So if you've got any questions, queries, or problems, use Twitter. They reply really quickly and provide great support. To have a successful trip to Walt Disney World in Florida, you need to be prepared. It takes a lot of planning. You know, before you go, you need to know exactly which parks you're going to. You need to know which days to go. You need to know which rides you want to do. You need to make sure you've got your fast pass done as soon as you possibly can. On the day, you need to make sure you've got a plan of action to make sure you're going to do the things that you want to do. So planning and preparation is incredibly important. So don't underestimate it. Spend as much time as you possibly can researching and planning. If you just pitch up on the day at some sort of park and hope to see stuff, you're probably going to be disappointed. So planning and preparation is absolutely key. What does the world in Florida? There is so much to do. There are those four parks. There's the Disney Springs. There's two water parks. Enormous amount to do. A lot for adults to do if you are focused and plan exactly what you want to do. Hopefully this video has helped you do that. And if it did and you found it helpful, I'd love it if you gave it a like, thumbs up. But very importantly, please subscribe to Tips for Travelers and get much more travel inspiration, advice and tips. Thank you.